Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. So, really quickly, I'm going to add the second guitar part. I have had this uh, oscillating ticking going on. It's like tick, 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 tick. And I thought it was the um, disabled side of the trim circuit on this 18 watt. I just pulled the tube on that and turned it down because I've had difficulties with it. And the last tech it took a crack at it, couldn't get it to get quiet. So uh, I just disabled it. I don't use it that much. I've used it on a, a song before. It was like a principal way to uh, have an effect on a song that I have on my other record. And I really like that. Um, but if you run the trim side of the circuit, you lose a little bit of bite on the main channel. So since it was making noise, I was like, well, that's an easy decision. Because the other model that he makes is just a, a single channel, an SC where you don't have the trim side, you just have the high gain and like a slightly lower gain uh, side, you know, one channel. And uh, that one's lean and mean. It wasn't available when I bought this, so I just went ahead and got the whole thing. So I haven't used the trim much, and I thought it was that. But I actually think it was one of these um, tubes that gone bad. I didn't test it or even try to ascertain because I bought both of these around the same time. Uh, so I know they have about the same amount of uh, wear on them. So I just decided to slap a new pair and I'd gotten a couple at Everything Musical, my local shop. Uh, and so I just put those in just now. And man, the amp is like, you know, it's like a new pair of sneakers kind of feeling. Not a huge change or anything, but just, you know, for starters, that stupid ticking noise is gone. Watch me turn it on and it'll be back. But for now, the ticking noise is gone, the oscillation. And uh, it just sounds more dynamic, more in your face, maybe a little louder, like one or two dB hotter because it's just more output. As the tubes wear down, they lose output power. They just start getting quieter and weaker sounding. I guess because they're just, you know, air is getting in there or something. I have no idea. I forget how tubes disintegrate but over time, but it takes forever. And, you know, I use these uh, Eastern European tubes. These are, I guess, Russian or check tubes. I'm not sure where these are coming from. It's part of why tubes have gotten expensive because all of the conflicts and whatever. Um, but, and the tubes are fine and they work, but man oh man, you cannot beat the uh, American tubes of like the 50s, you know. It's just an unbelievable level of uh, manufacturing that we achieved at that point. Um, the glass from the 50s, the RCA glass, you know, Sylvania, Raytheon, General Electric, you know, you just go down the list unbelievable manufacturing standards. These tubes are just, you know, if you get one now, I need to get another clear top and put it in this one. I've had several RCA clear tops in there. Raytheon, Sylvania, GE, Green Sylvania labeled 12AX7s are heavenly. Uh, but they're all great, you know, and I like them. It's weird. I like American tubes in a fender and I like uh, European valves in a Marshall. So like Mullard, all the mullers are kind of dark. My favorite uh, European tube in here, I have some burned out ones over here. This is a uh, Amperex Bugle Boy with a different label on it. That was my favorite, the Amperex Bugle Boy. It's got a little guy, a little tube blowing a bugle on the, you know, on the glass, a little white icon. And um, those are sweet. They give a little more top end. And then if you want like a real neutral tone, Telefunken. So Telefunken for neutral, Mullard for dark, Amperex for like really light and sweet, like sh almost like sugary on top. So wonderful sounding. Um, and then the Americans sound perfect for these amps. Sylvania, Raytheon, RCA, General Electric. Love it. All right, so, but they're really expensive and 12AX7 was always very expensive. Back when I first started tube hunting, um, those were always at pricey because people use them in guitar amps and they use them in hi-fi. It's really easy to design an amplifier circuit around the 12AX7. All right, so they use it a lot and it's a great tube. It's just a kind of a high noise tube and not the most refined, but perfect for guitar amps. Um, all right, so uh, I've got a carved out little space. I'm gonna use two mics. Sometimes I'll take the little lead part that I play and make that just one mic, but I've got plenty of tracks, so I figure why not just make it bigger sounding with two mics so it'll sound like the other guitar. And I had some ideas about playing some different parts, but in here while I was trying to practice it, it was all just kind of standing out like a sore thumb and not adding anything. So I'm just going to add the little 
uh, three little riff bits that are like lead type bits and then I'm going to add in a, a chord voicing on that last chorus. Um, and what's cool about it is that this song is kind of busy, riff busy, um, but it doesn't have like tons of lead or anything like that on it. And basically because I'm really not capable yet, I'm working my way up and getting better you know, as I go. I'm already playing more guitar than I've ever played as far as like exploring the guitar and trying to become a better player and, and embracing an idiom like trying to learn blues and you know country uh, B bender riffs and things like that and uh, so I'm trying to get better and I'm documenting that as I make this record this one's getting better hopefully the next album you know I'll be even better because I'll have played more and more and more and I'll begin to expand my musical vocabulary play more guitar uh, so this is what I'm ready to do now with the hopes that in the next you know over the cycle of the next album, I'm going to be playing even more guitar with, uh, you know, more elaborate parts and just more interesting things going on for the ears. But I just got to keep learning. You know, it's like it's a process of not only just getting good at playing and getting, you know, coordinated physically, but getting the mindset together. You know, when to put these parts in, when to put the uh, the little bits in that are going to make the song better. Like where, what, and how, and when. All of those are the real questions you have to ask yourself, and that takes time to start to hear it. You know, you hear other arrangements uh, from other musicians, and you start realizing what they're doing, you know, the tradition behind it. And then you start figuring out how you can do that too, you know, with your skill level. All right, so. So this, I've got a mark set at 158 to get me into it. And then um, it's just like a, a unison bin and a couple other things I'm going to throw in there. I'll just show you. I'll probably screw it up a couple times and then I'll quickly record it. And then on the chorus, I'm just going to voice that uh, octave chord. For like whole notes. You'll see. And I, I actually forgot what I decided to do. I'll be able to remember once I, I get to it. Okay, let's take it off standby. I got brand new tubes. Uh, I've got no effects once again. Let me make sure I'm not. I didn't change that when I was playing it back yesterday, or yeah, two days ago. Um, no effects. Uh, levels are a unity gain. Same level I had for the uh, recording the uh, main part. So, I'm in the bridge pickup, Lawler bridge pickup here on my parts caster strat, and uh, here we go. And the, I'm going to tune down to D. I'm going to be in this, this uh, pentatonic box here at the uh, 12th fret for the whole thing. It's just like little different motions that you can do right in here. That I'm going to do. All right, here we go.
see if that was any good to just play back. Because I could do this all night and not better it, so. Let's just see what that sounded like. You go stand by and shut up. Went to play on the two channels. Go back to our mark. <laughs> riff just had something weird that was clashing with the next riff that I play low on the uh, neck you know up here on the neck not up here why oh, continually do that I think after all this time I would know which way to stand by <laughs> So at 224, I've got my second mark. Let's just see what happens. Let me just play some stuff in there and see if it helps. If not, we can always just 
eliminate like it never happened. But I'm going to start on this unison, uh, not unison, then uh, octave chord. Okay, I'm going to change that mark. I'll put it at 221. All right, here we go. That's all I'm gonna do right there is those dong, dong. And I, can, I may come up with another, some more guitar work um, later on. You know, I could picture that as, as uh, I get into bass and uh, start singing and stuff. There's a chance that I'll hear something new that I wanna add. But right now I just feel like what's there is there. I don't want to like fill it up with too much busyness, you know. Plus, at my skill level, it's important to make a good impression with what you can do and not like stay too long and expose yourself, you know, if that makes any sense. Like if you're not super skilled, you don't want to stay there too long. You want to just get in with the little bit that you can pull off and get out before you, uh, you know, make an ass of yourself. Kind of like life. All right, so. My wonderfully advanced methods here. Okay. Okay, that should be the correct spot. Let's see if we have, did I turn it off? No. Sometimes I, I'm faster than the tuner, and I might have went out of tune while it was still trying to settle down and tune for me. I'll move faster than the zoom tuner can do its tuning. That's a little flat. That's a little flat. That's a tiny bit flat. So a little flat all around. I think that's why. That was sounding funky. So I may come up, like I said, with more guitar to add, but right now I don't hear it. And I would like to. I thought of some stuff at home, but when I got in here, it just crowd, it started sounding crowded. And you know, one guitar kind of says it all. I originally was going to play these riffs within the little, you know, do it all in one shot. But it just sounded kind of like, I don't know, like rushed and forced. Where is the freaking? And I will always perform these songs with two players. We have two guitar players. It'll be me and Mark. And I could picture myself not playing on verses and stuff and only coming in on like choruses just to not clutter up the sound if it sounds like one guitar is controlling it and making it 
more dominant sounding with just, you know, with the one, especially if the one person's a super great player and you're just kind of there performing more than like attacking. Because playing guitar and singing at the same time, you know, it's a trade off. All right, here we go. It's not adding much, but it's it's giving it more of a you know like when you're mixing a core you're mixing a song and you have like an out chorus a part that ends the song and it's like big and up like think of any big song you know the last chorus well traditionally you start kind of pushing your levels up on that one so it's a little more exciting to the audience you know the person sitting in the car that last chorus they start rising and rising and rising just a little bit with the gain I've watched many guys do that on final mixes and uh, so that's what it uh, provides like a little extra something at the very end just to dress up that ending because the ending is you know your finish line moment okay let's go back and just make sure this little bit I did is okay <laughs> bits I played, you know, it's not Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix level, but it is, uh, it's etch level, you know, it's the etch, it's the level that etch is at right now, so, and uh, it works with the song, and uh, I have aspirations to be better, so that's all you can do, you know, just do what you can do and have aspirations to try harder, uh, if you want to, 
you know? I like the idea of like some of these young people not doing, you know, everything they're told. Don't do what you're told, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's something productive that helps you, but don't just do it because somebody's telling you to. All right. Don't take my advice either. All right, next time.